Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to look at the second half of the histology lab in which we're going to look at connective tissues. So if you want more help with epithelial tissues, go back and watch the previous video. So for connective tissues, there are two major classes that we're going to talk about. Okay, there is connective tissue proper and adipose. We're kind of lumping these together. Adipose tissue is not technically a part of connect connective tissue proper, but basically connective tissue proper and adipose is really gonna be everything except for cartilage, blood, and bone. And we're gonna have separate labs throughout a &P where we're gonna look at blood and bone. Okay, and the ones that we're gonna be looking at that fall into this larger category are gonna be areolar tissue, also called loose connective tissue, adipose tissue, of course, and then dense regular connective tissue. Cartilage falls into a different class by itself, and there's three of those that we're gonna look at. Hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and then fibrocartilage, okay? Now, all connective tissues really have two major components that we're gonna pretty much be able to see in all of these. Those are cells and what's called matrix, also called extracellular matrix. Now out of the cells, this is just different kinds of cells that lie in that particular tissue. For example, common cells that we'll see will be fibroblasts, mast cells, leukocytes, which are white blood cells, and there's going to be a whole host of other types of cells. And then really everything outside the cells is really just the matrix, okay? And the matrix itself is going to consist of fibers and ground substance. Ground substance is really just the medium in which everything sits, and then fibers are going to be strands of proteins such as collagen. We'll also see elastin as well. The first tissue we're going to look at is areolar connective tissue, also called loose connective tissue. The best way to describe areolar connective tissue is it looks like a spider web. So I remember I was watching Lord of the Rings Return of the King, this scene where one of the hobbits gets thrown into a spider web like this. That's pretty much what areolar tissue looks like, as you can see right here. And there's really three major things we want to be able to identify in the tissue. The first is what's called interstitial cells. So these interstitial cells are just the various cells that perform functions within the tissue. I'm not going to require that you be able to identify the specific type of interstitial cell uh, because there are multiple kinds. Like I said, we have mast cells, fibroblasts, white blood cells, but just knowing that it is an interstitial cell, which is just a general term for all the cells within this tissue. Here's a couple of examples of interstitial cells right here, these purple dots. The purple, the dark purple regions are really the nuclei of those cells, but you can tell where all these cells are. We have a big cluster right here. Here's an interstitial cell, there's an interstitial cell, okay? So be able to identify what an interstitial cell is in this slide. But the other thing is we wanna be able to identify the protein fibers in areolar tissue. And there are two major types. We have collagenous fibers or collagen and elastic fibers or elastin. Now, when we're looking at e collagen fibers, those are gonna be the thicker fibers. We can see it a lot better in this image right here. This pinkish, very thick fiber that's running right here. This is a collagen fiber, okay? Um, here's another one, another pink thick one that's running down the, di the diagonal of this square. There's another one running right here, okay? In this picture, it's a little bit harder to see, but this kind of lightish pink one right there that's a little bit thicker than the dark purple ones, um, this would be a collagen fiber. Where I'm tracing my mouse right now, this pink one is a little bit thicker. That would be a collagen fiber, okay? Now, in contrast, the elastic fibers, or elastin, are much thinner. In this picture down here, they're going to be dark purple. They're also that way up here. But you can tell they're a lot thinner or skinnier than the collagen fibers. Um, the dark purple ones that you can barely see, they're very thin, like this one where the arrow is pointing to. This one is actually an elastic fiber. Um, we have another one that's actually right here where I'm tracing my mouse. This dark, very skinny purple fiber, that is an elastic fiber. Okay, so those are the three things that you need to be able to identify for areolar tissue. Now in terms of areolar tissue's location, it's really just the packing of the body. So this is going to be a tissue that we're going to find 
scattered throughout the body, pretty much everywhere. Um, one place that we are going to find it is in the tissues deep to the epidermis. So we have not covered the skin yet, but there's a couple layers that are deep to that. That is the dermis and the hypodermis, and we're going to find areolar tissue in that location. But it's very broadly distributed throughout the body. It's really just the body's packing material. Okay. The second tissue that we're going to cover is not technically a part of connective tissue proper, and that's adipose tissue or fat tissue. Now on an exam, you can't just write fat tissue, you're going to have to write the full name, which is adipose tissue. That is the scientific term for this. In the simplest terms, adipose tissue comprises body fat, okay, and fat anywhere in the body. The individual cells of adipose tissue are called adipocytes. And each one of these cells contains large lipid vacuoles. These lipid vacuoles are just regions of the cell which actually occupy the vast majority of its volume, and they contain triglycerides. Remember that body fat is the storage site of triglycerides. That's actually how your body stores fat. And so it's actually these large lipid vacuoles within the adipocytes that contain the triglycerides. So for example, if we look down here, um, this right here in pink, this is actually one adipocytes plasma membrane. Okay, It's colored a little bit differently than over here, but this large white space within there is going to be the lipid vacuole. All that is lipid. Okay, And the matrix really is going to be all this blue, light blue stuff out here that is separate from the adipocytes. Okay. Now over here in this picture we don't see much of the matrix. Um, these cells are very closely packed together, but again these are adipocytes, individual adipocytes, and these purple regions surrounding them are the adipocyte plasma membranes. Here they call them cytoplasmic membranes, but those are the same thing. Now within these cells the lipid vacuole is so large that it literally forces all the organelles of the cell toward the plasma membrane. And so what you see here is these nuclei, these much more darkened regions on the plasma membrane of each of these cells. Here's one right there where my mouse is. That is a nucleus of the cell. Okay? So the lipid vacuole is so large that it actually forces everything toward the walls of the cell. That is the plasma membrane. And so when you're looking at adipocytes, if you see a darkened region pretty much on the plasma membrane, that is the nucleus, okay? And so really when you're looking at adipose tissue, you need to be able to identify individual adipocytes, the nucleus, the plasma membrane, the matrix if you have a region where you can see significant amounts of it, and the lipid vacuole. Lipid vacuole is very important. And in terms of adipose tissue's location, we have it everywhere. Um, anywhere that you have body fat. So uh, men tend to store body fat in the abdominal area. Women tend to store it in the hips and the thighs. Um, but anywhere you have it. We also have adipose tissue that cushions joints. Um, and so really this is going to be everywhere in the body to some extent. Okay. Now the next kind of connective tissue has a long name. Dense regular collagenous connective tissue. Now most of the time we omit the collagenous because it's implied and we just call it dense regular connective tissue. So make sure you understand that. This is sometimes omitted and it's still correct. So dense regular connective tissue, the regular implies that all of the protein fibers run in the same direction. Okay. There's another kind of connective tissue that we're not going to look at here, I'll probably put it in a separate video eventually, called dense irregular connective tissue. In that connective tissue it's almost the same except the protein fibers run in a lot of different directions. Here they run in one different direction. And the major protein that makes up those fibers in the matrix is collagen. This type of tissue has a lot of collagen. And the matrix is extremely dense with it, thus the name dense regular connective tissue. All right? So in this tissue, the collagen fibers of the matrix, they run in the same direction. So let me kind of uh, indicate what that means here. So if we look at these fibers, we can kind of look at these kind of lighter regions to get a feel for where the fibers are running. But notice they're running in the same direction. Okay? Pretty much if you drew a straight line through this, um, it would never deviate from that state, straight line. We look at this picture over here, yeah we see some oscillating, but notice it's not veering off into one direction. Okay, If this were to veer off into one direction or the other, it might actually be another kind of uh, connective tissue called fibrocartilage, which we'll be looking at at the end of this video. But as long as these protein fibers really seem to be running in the same direction without any veering off to one side or the other, 
it's a good bet that it's dense regular connective tissue. Okay. Um, what you'll also see are these darkened regions, which are the nuclei of fibroblasts. So fibroblasts are really common in, in uh, dense connective tissues. They're the cells that secrete the collagen. If we look over here, sometimes the darkened regions will look like wisps of purple. So this would actually be a fibroblast right here. There's another fibroblast right here. Okay. If we look at this one up here, the fibroblasts aren't as obvious, but we can see that the strands of collagen are all running in the same direction. Okay? That's going to be dense regular connective tissue. One of the places that we find this is in tendons. So we haven't gotten to muscles yet, but here's an image of the calf muscle and how it connects to the heel bone. So the calf muscle actually does not connect directly to the heel bone. In fact, muscles never directly connect. They actually indirectly connect through a structure called a tendon, which we typically draw in white right here. And with the tendon, uh, if you kind of look very carefully at it, you'll see that um, all of these little strands are running in the same direction. Okay? Now this is a very macroscopic view, but it's the same thing at the microscopic level. All of these strands run in the same direction, and what that allows is the tissue to resist tearing in that one direction. Now, here's an application. If you were to get a lateral blow to this, uh, this tendon right here, which is actually called the Achilles tendon, if you got a lateral blow to it, that comes from the right and pushes toward the left, that might actually tear this tendon because these fibers are running vertically. They don't protect against movements going left and right, but they do protect against strains and tears going vertically because that's the direction that the fibers run. So make sure you understand that. But we find it in tendons. Okay, we're gonna switch gears now and talk about cartilage. So there's a few things with cartilage that you need to be able to identify that are extremely important. First of all are the lacunae and chondrocytes. So uh, this is a good example of one right here. In cartilage, what we'll typically see are these kind of whitish regions, and inside there's going to be a dark purple region. These are called lacunae. Specifically, the white region, which is kind of like a hole, so to speak, is called the lacuna, or plural lacunae. And then these darkened regions are actually the nuclei of chondrocytes, which are cells that reside within cartilage. And we see these everywhere. Okay? The first type of cartilage is hyaline cartilage. Okay? And so, like I said, the thing you should look for are the lacunae. Um, I think that they kind of resemble octopus suckers. Okay? Um, some people think they might look like sushi, looked, looking from the side. Um, but in any case, you need to look for those lacunae with the chondrocytes. In hyaline cartilage, these lacunae are more spaced apart. Okay? They're not as densely packed as we're going to see in elastic cartilage on the next slide. So in hyaline cartilage, these lacunae are more distantly spaced. Okay? Also, the matrix that runs between all the lacunae is very smooth looking, almost very glassy in some images that you'll see. Here's another view. Um, in this case, the lacunae appear to be a little bit closer together, but again, the giveaway that it's hyaline cartilage is that the matrix is very smooth. This region between all of the lacunae is very smooth. Now, the other thing that hyaline cartilage has is perichondria. This will not be visible in every view, but if you look right here where my mouse is, this kind of darkened region that looks like it's separate from the matrix of the hyaline cartilage, this region is called the perichondrium. And in some types of cartilage, like hyaline versus elastin, it may be a different uh, size. But it's going to look like a different consistency than the rest of the matrix of the cartilage. And that's a giveaway that you're looking at a region called the perichondrium. Okay? Now, hyaline cartilage, where is it found? Well, it's found on the articulating surfaces of bones, so in joints. So, for example, joint cartilages that get worn away that cause people to need a hip replacement, that cartilage is made of hyaline cartilage. Okay? Also, the fetal skeleton, before a fetus actually gets bone, uh, that tissue is actually made of hyaline cartilage as well. Okay? Now, elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage is tougher than hyaline cartilage. It still has these lacunae, okay, which um, contain chondrocytes. Okay? So the chondrocytes are the darker regions, and the lighter region is really just the space called the lacunae. But notice that these uh, chondrocytes and lacunae are actually closer together than they were in hyaline cartilage. Okay? Generally speaking, these 
lacunae are packed closer together. The other thing that's a giveaway that you have elastic cartilage and not hyaline is if you look at the matrix area, the space between all these lacunae, it's a lot rougher in appearance. Okay, it's a lot rougher. Um, if we compare it back to hyaline, it's very smooth, that is the matrix, very smooth, whereas in elastic, it's very rough in appearance. Okay, so make sure you understand that. Also, elastic cartilage has perichondrium. So again, you're looking for a region that flanks the cartilage itself that looks like a different consistency than the matrix. Um, and this would be the perichondrium up here. We also have it in this image down at the bottom as well. And here's some perichondrium over here, and then over here in this top image, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. And the other thing about elastic cartilage is it's gonna be found in a few areas, such as the ear and the epiglottis, which actually helps us swallow without moving things into the respiratory tract when we eat. Okay, but the ear is a good place to know for that. I think of epiglottis ear elastic, E, E, E. The very last type of cartilage we're going to look at is fibrocartilage. This one is often confused with dense regular connective tissue. Okay, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So fibrocartilage is the toughest cartilage type. It's found in areas subject to high compressive stress. So for example, in your knees, if we look at the knee joint, we have two menisci. Um, this is a little bit beyond the scope here, but menisci are fibrocartilage pads that cushion the tibia against the femur. Okay, so we see this menisci here. They're made of fibrocartilage. We also have them in between the vertebra of the spine. Okay, again, to resist against compressive stress. So they're very strong and they cushion uh, because they're so strong. Fibrocartilage have small lacunae. Um, their lacunae are going to look quite a bit different than we see in hyaline or elastic cartilage, but they still have lacunae and chondrocytes. However, fibrocartilage does not have a perichondrium. Now, in fibrocartilage, the collagen fibers, they appear to go in one direction, but they're wispier than they are in dense regular connective tissue. So this is most apparent in this picture up here at the top. If you notice, you can kind of see that these fibers aren't really going in one general direction, okay? It looks like they're kind of curving off to one side, okay? So they're kind of curving. They're not going exactly in one direction. So that's a good bet that you have fibrocartilage and not dense regular connective tissue because they're easily confused. If we look at this one, yeah, there's a few going in one direction, but this one appears to go up and then it kind of goes, you know, it's not going in one straight line as you can see. Okay, not exactly. The other thing is around these purple areas, which are the chondrocytes, you have these light areas around it, which of course are the lacunae. Okay, the lacunae are a lot smaller than they are in the two other types of cartilage, but if we compare this back to dense regular connective tissue, uh, you, don't, you clearly do not have those lacunae. Okay, those little white regions that are gonna surround each of the cells, okay? So the big thing that becomes difficult with connective tissue for most students is contrasting dense regular connective tissue with fibrocartilage. But the key with this is with dense regular connective tissue, look for these strands, these fibers, really going in the same direction, okay, without changing directions or wisping away in one direction or another. And then also with fibrocartilage, they're going to have small lacunae, which you're not going to be able to see in dense regular connective tissue because they don't have it. All right, so hopefully this video made sense and gave you a good understanding of the types of connective tissue. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.